Last week on BuildBox. Done. Your time, 2843. Today's build is pistol perfection. Okay, and they're doing all this cutting on them, but neither one of those guns have been assembled or tested yet. Or yet. Chop shop. Chop shop. <laughs> Man. I'm ready to paint. You're ready to paint? You're ready to paint? Well, let him take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three of the uh, groups of targets, you know, they were paired up. Two or three of them, I shot the first one and it knocked the second one off anyway. Two hours left, Jimmy. No problem. No problem. I'm gonna build two. Didn't see any stencil material, so I kind of made do. Um... For more than three centuries, Americans have built their own guns. And now it's more popular than ever. Today, three builders race the clock and each other. They face a mission-specific box of parts and a series of challenges. The winner earns bragging rights, prizes, and takes home a gun. This is BuildBox. So, the three colors that I was gonna put on this gun are the same three colors that are on the other two guns. So we're not doing that. The Glock 34 is one of my best friend Charlie's platforms. Didn't see any stencil material, so I kind of made do. Um... Uh, unfortunately, he passed away recently, and uh, he was a good friend of a lot of people that are here. Uh, but this is a Aloha Hibiscus. I'm kind of building this as a tribute to Charlie. Oh, okay. Because of... Uh, he, like, oh, shit. Oh, that hadn't been long enough. Uh, he always wore a Hawaiian shirt on Fridays, which is kind of why the uh, hibiscus and the purple and the Hawaiian theme kind of came into it. So yeah, that's the concept behind it, is uh, kind of a tribute gun. Sneak a little bit of Hawaiian theme in there and roll with it. So it's it's interesting, all these, they're three complete different strategies. You know, we have uh, Josh, who's doing a little bit of everything all at once, kind of getting everything going. Joe's going for straight function. Function first. first, function above all else. Yeah, and then our last guy here, he's just have no idea if it works. I'm just painting it. I make the joke all the time that life's too short to carry an ugly gun, but the function has to come first. As far as like the uh, the challenges, you know, I tried to do it whenever they were like right in the middle of something tedious. I hope you two are confident in your amount of time left because this says to redeem it at any time and handcuff your opponents for five minutes. Wait, what? The fuzzy bandit. Get your last little bit in there, Joe. All right, stop for a second. I got something for you here. Handcuffs. So here's something that y'all don't know that I'm going to tell you. I am extremely claustrophobic. Handcuffs scare me. They terrify me. We should have got Sereno to do this. He was a cop. I think that he chose the wrong time to use this challenge because I was already set up in my booth working with two hands in a tiny space. I had a flashlight in my vice on me. And he is sitting there working patiently. Can't hold the flashlight when your hands are cuffed. And that's when this avid vice come in. Super handy. Well, the handcuffs really handcuffed my ability to move things around. So I just grabbed the nearest receptacle, which happened to be the trash can, threw what I needed, and, and hauled ass. The most challenging part of having the handcuffs was trying to run the torch. The torch is going to give me a faster dry time because it's going to burn off the volatiles. But the handcuffs didn't allow my hands to get far enough away to keep me from lighting myself or the handcuffs on fire. So I just kind of had to set it down and use the, the heat gun. Selecting the parts and everything could be confusing and everything. You really got to have kind of a base knowledge of the guns of uh, that model, the Glock clones, because uh, there's so many different parts that are similar in size and everything, and you really have to uh, know what you're doing. 45 minutes, everybody's moving a little bit faster now. 
they thought. You heard it. You heard it. This is plenty of time. Jimmy said, I'm going to build two. Yeah. And now he's going, he might get one. He's he's starting to sweat a little bit. He was, he was cool earlier, but I don't know, man. We'll see. Threw it in, wasn't paying attention, got it crammed in there, looking at the clock, ran that slide on there, and when I did, it stuck. I noticed it was a 17. Not the first time I'm a gunsmith by nature, not the first time I had a Glock slide on. And normally, you just re uh, rack that slide to the rear, drop the back cover plate, pull out the safety, pull out the striker, and that comes right off. Didn't happen this time. Build Box, brought to you by Timney Triggers, Aero Precision, Lone Wolf Arms, Ballistic Advantage, and Hollow Sun. First, I racked it on the table a couple times, it wasn't coming off. So I grabbed the mallet, and boy, did I hit that, and it came right off. And um, so, uh, Back to the drawing board. That's, that's how we got to that point. Builders, you have 30 minutes left. Changed some of the Eternals parts after that that I thought might have been affected, and uh, that's where we're at. I think you made everyone sweat just a little bit more. Caleb, what are, what are your concerns right now? We've got less than 30 minutes. Yeah, so at this point, you can go test fire it. What are you gonna do if it doesn't work? Just be like me and hope pretty gets you by. There's a lot of things that could go wrong when you hit a gun with a hammer, but it's not the first time I've hit a gun with a hammer, so. That's a good sound. Yep, uh, I think I will not use my range check. Seems like it still functions. Jimmy decided he is not gonna use his test fire. He's just going off a of sound. What? Yeah. He's got like 20 minutes left. He's, he may still make it out there, but as of right now, he's decided he's not doing it. Josh is having some problems. Uh-oh. Cutting it close now. I don't know. I don't, maybe it's a pain issue. I'm used to working with Cerakote. It's a pretty thin coating. I don't. I don't know. Pain, a pain issue. If you if you got a little bit of too much pain on the rails, um, something like that, that's an easy fix. All right. And so you can kind of spray everything, and you know it all goes together, and everything tends to fit just fine. It's how you deal with that, because you can actually you can end up making it worse. I consciously did not paint the top of the frame. You know, not get a whole lot of paint in there, and apparently there was still enough that it it wanted to stick when you racked the slide to the rear. Let's see if we can go test fire this sucker. Did you pull, did you pull extra ammo? Uh, yes, I did. Thankfully, you know, I got those extra practice rounds because I almost didn't grab that out of the bonus box um, because uh, going out on the range and just dumping all 25 of them, it, it uh, worked everything loose. Test fire. Oh, we're got another. All test right. Fire. Head on good, out. Good. Eyes, ears. I'm I'm really glad he changed his mind. After uh, the function test, uh, I came back inside. Jimmy, you know, it's like it fired one round and it quit, and it won't fire another round. No light strike, no nothing. Is dead trigger? No, it's uh, clicking off. Oh. It's yeah. dropping, but it's not hitting anything. I uh, made one last tweak on that trigger bar. Three minutes to go. I sure hope Joe gets back into the workshop before we're done with the episode. Oh, going to test fire? Yeah. The second test fire uh, worked really well. I was able to run some more rounds through it, kind of check some accuracy testing in the berm, and I think it was very, very beneficial. One minute to go. One minute. Me and uh, me and Jimmy, I think, kind of made some very similar aesthetically guns, and so I think that's going to be kind of a who done it better deal, and uh, so that's going to be interesting. So when I went out there with two minutes left, I knew if it didn't fire, that my uh, and it did fire. So that's the only thing that uh, we've never had somebody not in the studio with 30 seconds to go. That's awesome. We are coming in the last 30, 30 seconds. Huh. 
All right. He strolls in 15. with 15 seconds left. That's how he rolls. 10. That, you know, I I'm still not confident at all. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, you're done. I'm really confident about my gun as far as function. I think it looks good. I think I made the right decision, making it simple, yet still have some really interesting small concepts. I'm really confident about my gun as far as function. I would have liked to have about another five minutes, but we'll just see what the judges say. I'm pretty confident about it. I'm excited to see what they think about, you know, like the grip work and stuff that we all did. I expect it to fire. I uh, made one last tweak on that trigger bar. I expect it will fire. All right, Kevin, I've got Jimmy's gun here. So hard not to flinch. Something's wrong with that. I would guess maybe a bent trigger bar. That was one of the only things that I didn't have time to replace after I separated the gun with the hammer. Psych. Wow. Yeah. It did go off. I got a couple to go off. Yeah. I, I don't, was it that the mag? Oh no, that's, no. that's internals on the gun. Yeah. My gun didn't run very well at all. All right. <laughs> it worked. Did he get right. any on his hair? Sure, Wait. How's my hair? It looks great. Okay. Happy to do it. All right. Okay, here's Josh's gun. Okay. I think it's on. <laughs> Does it run? <laughs> it, run okay. it runs and it shoots real straight. I just noticed something. Yeah, what is it? Yeah. It started. Oh, that's not put together. Uh-uh. Yeah. That's missing a piece right there in a pin. Yeah. All right. I do like the grip texture. Looks like my pistol ran pretty well, so I'm excited about that. Ooh, almost. Oh, almost you got get us. Me? Almost got us. <laughs> It shoots good and it feels good for the most part. I did feel that it's that little... magwell not being attached shifting a little yeah. bit. In the grand, you know, scheme of things, it's it's a tiny thing. Pretty pretty happy with how it looked like it performed. I mean, they looked like they were hitting targets pretty well. All right, Joe's gun is next. I, I can already tell a magwell just fits me. Ooh, that's a little loose, huh? Yeah. I think mine was having a little bit of soft ejection and wouldn't go in fully in the battery. Gun's yeah, running faster than the magazine can feed it. The yeah. spring is too light. I don't think mine ran completely right, so I'm very, very concerned. We had a good run. <laughs> Did it malfunction? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, to check. Check. Yeah. The slide's running so fast, it's actually yeah. able to stoke by. Let's check these things out and get them out of here. Uh, hopefully, I've got enough completion, simplicity, and I hope they saw that I intended to do some more tuning. The clock. The clock changes everything. It's a it's a major, major impact. We got the Scallywags version of pistol perfection, Jimmy's gun. Chris, why don't you get us started with this one? 
he did a nice job. He made it look good. He chose suppressor height sights. But when it comes to shootability and functionality, it's a big goose egg for me. Even though I do this professionally for a living, which is not gonna look like it when you watch the show, I was so far out of my element. I made every mis every rookie mistake. He does know what he's doing, and yeah. I think given a little bit more time, this gun's <laughs> gonna run. I loved his stipple job. He's clearly an artist. You know, the way he used these different colors in there to make kind of make that blue pop, it, I mean, it looks awesome. When my stuff was hanging to paint, I had already stippled, had my entire gun laid out, had my theme together, had my paint laid on it, and I was getting cocky. Yeah, I mean, he did say he was gonna build two guns, mm -hmm. and he didn't get us one. I'm hoping that, you know, the performance, like I hope that mine running well is a pretty big factor. It's a really cool gun to me. Um, of course, it functioned really well. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, the accuracy was great. But I am interested just to see what they think about aesthetics and everything else. There's a couple paint smudges up on the slide, which aesthetically doesn't do a whole lot for me. Yeah, but if this was Cerakote and I, he had baked it, it would be... It would be... Perfect, He's yeah. got three hours to do that, Kevin. I You're know. gonna say that? Yeah, I'm gonna say that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's from him handling it after he painted it, trying to get it going, so I understand that, but, you know, it still, it is what it is. Is anybody gonna address the elephant in the room? I, his, I, was, his, I was getting there. He is bait, yeah. We, we were getting there. That comes off. Comes right off, and it, uh, you can feel it coming off while you're shooting it. You know, he did some really fine detail work. He built a nice pistol. Uh, but his attention to detail got a little off. I did try and incorporate as many types of design and aspects to try and put as much of cross-platform paint, surface textures. I'm hoping it's an overall well-thought-out build, and that gives me some points there and makes up. Less is Mo. Joe Mo. All right. Chris, I gotta get your thoughts on this because you look disappointed. I am I'm tremendously disappointed in this gun in that I, I, really, I really wanted it to work. I had the recoil springs with me with the test fire, but I didn't swap them in and I'm seriously regretting that. We just couldn't make it run right. So this gun here actually fired though. We were able to get some rounds down range. So it does have some functionality. It does. He built this gun as a dedication to his friend Charlie. Right. And I, I believe wholeheartedly he nailed it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Charlie, I, I know Charlie. Charlie would have loved this gun. Yeah, for me, this gun's a straight-up winner, just looking at it. Kind of the foundation of what I started was make sure I had a gun running and then work on the aesthetics. Looks like that plan didn't work out completely for me. Joe's pistol perfection definitely looked the part for me. For me, Josh totally met the criteria that he wanted to build, but it falls short for me. With Jimmy's gun, I mean, you can tell he's an artist. The way he applied that camo pattern, the methods he used, I mean, it's a beautiful gun, but it just doesn't run. So do you guys think we have got an answer? Yeah. I know which gun I would carry. Really just up in the air what the judges think. Build Box. Brought to you by Double Star, Real Avid, Gundelio.com, Brownells, and Blue Force Gear. I don't care how long you've been doing this, what your experience level is, whether you're the, a novice in your garage or if you've been doing this 25 years, when that clock starts, nothing matters, everybody's equal. Builders, pistol perfection was the challenge. All three guns had great paint jobs, customization, stippling, and creativity. But not all were reliable on the range. Three hours seemed like plenty of time for this build, but it still came down to the wire. Joe, your long slide range gun had a few function issues and the optic was loose. Both of my hits, I had instincts to correct them, and for the sake of time, I bypassed them. And it bit me in the ass. The judges were surprised when you started grinding down the rear sight, but it turned out great. Very nice custom details and accents. Charlie would have loved this gun. Yeah, Joe, I love the subtlety of the hibiscus flower on the front slide, and the front and back strap of the gun stippling was really well done. Josh, your carry pistol build had an optic, but not optic height sights. 
Also, the magwell was not attached correctly. Bad thing is the magwell didn't come off right, and I didn't see the uh, the taller sights. You know, I went back and looked, and I'm like, oh yeah, they're right there, and just didn't notice them, I guess, you know. But it was accurate and reliable, and the judges liked your consistent stipple job and creative paint scheme. Josh, your gun came out great. I really liked it. It's a little big for a carry gun for me, but the stippling and the accuracy, top notch. Thank you. Jimmy, beautiful gun. Nice choices of parts, including the suppressor height sights. But the wrong locking block and a bent trigger bar led to problems in reliability. You started with customizing the aesthetics, but should you have started with assembly getting the gun functioning? 100%. Jimmy, my man, you are known for your custom camo patterns and you've shown us exactly why. The camo pattern you did here today was one of the most innovative I've seen in a really long time. So excellent work. Appreciate it. All great looking guns. This was another close one. If they all functioned equally, then aesthetically, I think I win hands down. And the winner of this Build Box Challenge is Josh. Awesome. Jimmy's paint was definitely cool. Like he definitely put a lot of effort into that. I can see that. And then uh, Joe's, I actually really liked the just simple. Like it was very clean, you know, like all that. It, it looked pretty damn good. I think the judges were spot on. I mean, functionality always got to be key. Want to build the guns you saw on the show or something like it? Go to buildboxTV.com where we have all the links for the parts and tools you'll need.